Hey everyone, I'm doing a voiceover for a puzzle sesh I had yesterday. It's called Puzzle Streak on Lee Chess. If you get one wrong, you lose. Join me in solving some puzzles. Um, I think this is really good for my chess and hopefully for yours too. Uh, let me know your thoughts uh, about this video down below. Some of the puzzles at the very start are very simple, like Queen, H7. And in this one, it's a very nice one because the rook is on the same diagonal as the king, right? So we play bishop d4. Uh, previous Reese thought that was pretty nasty, right? Nice one. This one's nice because we have an undefended rook, so I pick up on that and capture the rook on e8. And again, it's kind of the same concept of king and the knight being under danger, so we capture both of them. Let me know if you guys like these voiceover content. Obviously the queen on the same line as the king. I enjoy making this because this is a little bit easier and it's also good for my chess. And hey, if you follow along, maybe it could be, could be good for your chess as well, right? Nice little uh, important move, Rook F1. We've been doing a lot of these puzzles in the Facebook group Understanding Chess. So I'll leave a link to that above if you wanna join that. It has over 800 members now. And yep, a nice little crusher style checkmate. Oh, well, not a checkmate, but winning the rook on e1. Very important. Nice attacking theme here to try and clear the g6 square from the for the queen. And this is a nice little idea. I took a little bit of time here to make sure that I have the correct checkmating pattern if the queen the king comes out to g4, but didn't in the actual puzzle. Here, the queen and the knight make a very good team, and the rook on e8 chips, chops the king off. This one, I immediately pick up on queen e4, but for some reason, didn't see the bishop was hanging until now. <laughs> so there you go. Three bishop. I try and not do, um, I try and, you know, intuitively solve these puzzles, like that one, clearing the square. I don't, you know, I don't want to spend forever making sure I have the right move. I want to go off my natural instincts and, and my calculation ability here. This one's nice, the knight is undefended. Obviously the king is open, so we see that immediately. And we just double check that we can take the knight. This one's simple, we can use the rook and chop off the connection, the guard of that queen. All right, capturing the rook to go for the back right checkmate, the knight guards the, the g7 square. All right, similar to that last puzzle with the, the king and the queen, we play the sneaky move bishop h3, right? Able to capture the rook and win in exchange. Bishop b5, skewer. And now it's very important to take with the rook there because otherwise the he, uh, otherwise queen h8. And in this example, yeah, 96, that was a nasty little move. This one's simple, queen h5, queen f7, right in the face. Don't need to even need to calculate that. This is a trick here. Don't fall for queen g7, right? I showed that in the thing. It's queen d8. It's an important one. All right, so now what to do from here? This is probably the hardest puzzle that I've solved so far in the mix. I was looking at this variation where I go queen e8, king c7, knight e6, king b6. And yeah, I'm not too thrilled with it at first, but I keep looking, I keep looking and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what to do after king b6? Because that just seems like the most natural variation. And eventually I pick up on it, but it takes me a little bit of time here to actually play the best move. Otherwise, you know, what? black has a pretty big attack. You know, queen a3 check is coming, maybe, you know, even bishop to a3. So it's important to see queen d8 check, right? As I'm showing, king b5 and a very important knight c7, right? because the rook is actually undefended now because the king is in the way, right? And we can capture the rook on d3. This is a really nice pattern to remember. I picked up on this one quick. Capture the rook and knight to e3 check. Now what to do from here? This is an important one. At first glance, you know, I saw this move quickly here, but I was unsure if it worked, bishop b3, but it turns out I can simply just play it uh, because once I capture the, the queen on d1, um, I'm actually picking up the rook on c8, right? So the rook on c8 is still attacked, right? That's an important um, 
idea to remember. He's not getting um, two rooks for the, for the queen there. And this is simply just a um, pawn promotion. Nice king, um, uh, nice king position there to promote the pawn. This one's very, very nice here. I can end up capturing the bishop because the pawn is so strong. He cannot prevent it from queening, even if he captures my rook. This one's a nice one. The rook slices off the king's escape. This one's a nice one, too. It's a very familiar pattern, as you can see. <laughs> Wincing. <laughs> All right, this one's a cool one. Rook to e6 check, similar to the last one. I thought it was rook d1, but then I saw that the king could go to c5. And as you can see, I'm leaning in because I'm playing rook f4 and b4, right? It's a nice little pattern here to remember. All right, I would have stopped the pass pawn. We trade the rooks, and we put the king in front of it, like this. Very nice. This one might not be obvious at first, but knight c3 is a very strong move here because it kicks the queen away from guarding the knight on f3. Bishop to e5. And notice that both queens are in danger here. This is an important one here. Now in this puzzle, I rushed. I rushed this puzzle, I took an f7, and I made a mistake. So for these puzzle streaks, it's really important to remember that you know you get one wrong and, and it's all over. The problem with queen takes f7 is you know I'm trading too much material and I'm actually not up. I'm actually down material if I trade the queens. So it's very important for me to capture an f6 and actually go for an attack on the king, which would be a checkmating pattern. I just went too quickly.